Newcastle Fan TV here. We're live for the uh, boat trip on our way to the uh, Fulham game. If you look down there, you can just see the last few people getting on board. Uh, going to be sailing up and down the Thames River, singing loads of songs. It's going to be real fun here today. And then going down to Fulham and hopefully putting at least four or five past them. That's the plan. And it's with uh, the organiser of the boat trip today to Fulham, uh, sailing up and down the Thames, here with Raymond uh, from Red Action. This is brilliant, Raymond. Well, you know, the sun's shining, we've got a beer in our hand and everyone's having a good time. So, you know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it could sink. <laughs> well, we won't say that. Um, now, listen, brilliant thing what you're doing here. How long have you been doing this? How long have you been organising this uh, boat trip to Fulham? It's about the fourth season. Uh, we do it with varying degrees of success. You need to get lucky with the timing. You know, August, September, April, May, people are all over it. December, January, people aren't too keen to spend four hours on the river. True, but you've really been blessed with some great weather today, sun shining. So far, so good. You know, the team are on a bit of a run at the moment, disappointing result against Everton, but obviously when the team are doing better, people are more up for a good time and a few beers and a sing song, so hopefully it'll be a, big, be a good day. Now, I know you guys also, apart from doing stuff like this, you do a lot of stuff within the club. You you organise, uh, you know, getting the fans going, etc. I mean, how hard is that? I mean, we get fans, um, and people complaining sometimes that the atmosphere may be not as great as it should be at the Emirates. How do you get fans going down there? Well, it is really difficult, you know, you need people pulling in the same direction. There's a lot of divisions in the fan base at the moment with people against the manager, against the board. And, you know, we've seen fans fighting amongst themselves and it can be really difficult. Uh, you try and encourage people, you know, to make the noise and get behind the team and support their team when they're in the ground. We get a lot of negative comments about the bad atmosphere, but the only way that's going to change is by people contributing to it. So, you know, you can't blame anyone but yourself. If you contribute to it, you know, you do your best to make a difference. And if you're just going to sit there with your arms folded and still complain about the atmosphere, then, you know, you're part of the problem. Now, why is it that, you know, you go to an away game and the atmosphere, you, I mean, you wouldn't need anybody to get anybody going on an away game because the atmosphere is absolutely brilliant for all Arsenal away games. But at home games, we do need guys like you to get us going. It is a bit quiet sometimes. Why? Well, it is a different demographic with the away fans because obviously they're, they're the Arsenal fans. They've been Arsenal fans for years. When you look at the home grounds and, uh, you know, all the tourists that come, the people that come for the first time, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. We acknowledge that. But, you know, there's a lot of people in London on business or on holiday just going along to Arsenal for the day. And obviously they're not the people who are going to know the songs and going to want to contribute to the atmosphere. And... The UA fans are the guys who make the noise. They're obviously spread around the 60,000 seat stadium, so it can be difficult. Uh, even if one in 10 fan, if one in 10 fans at the stadium sung, then it would be a lot better. At the moment, it's probably about one in 20, one in 25. So, you know, we'll do whatever we can to try and improve that ratio and slowly, slowly improve the atmosphere. What do you think of these uh, fans abroad? Are they with megaphones and stuff like that, getting crowds going and drums and all that? Are you up for that or? Uh, we would give it a try, but we have tried it in the past. And Arsenal fans are a little bit too cool for school. They don't like to be told uh, what to do. You know, if someone was up there with a megaphone, then they would just get a whole load of abuse. And we know that. And if someone wants to come along and say, I want to be the person with a megaphone, then we will set it up. But it's very difficult. People don't like to be told what to sing and when to sing it. It's just the English mentality and especially the thing that Arsenal fans have got, which we acknowledge, that's fine. But... You know, the, all the choreographed stuff is really, really difficult in the UK. Well, this is brilliant. Loving this. And um, we, we, we've only just set off a four-hour trip. How are, they, how are all these not going to be when they get down to Fulham? Well, that's why I wanted to do the interview as soon as possible before I've had a few beers. So, uh, you know, turn the camera on at two o'clock and you'll see what the, what the differences are. some more fans um, have you been on this boat before but this... yes I've been on this boat before two years ago my husband jumped off the uh, side <laughs> so we came back for a few more laughs right now the atmosphere is just building up 
big game today. Just I want to ask. We're just early. warming up, and I, I thought I, I thought I'd get some interviews in before everybody gets pissed around here, right? Yeah, so too late. Too I, late. <laughs> too late. We started at nine o'clock this morning. Oh, we play. Yeah. The, the game today, Fulham. Fulham, what, what, Fulham. What, what's your prediction? How do you think we'll get on? We're going to beat Fulham. Fulham, be scared. Be very scared today. We are coming back in a big way. <laughs> now, how long have you, how long have you been supporting Arsenal? All my life. Liar. I'm not going to ask you how many years that is, but it's probably about 21. But <laughs> 21 years. <laughs> but um, what, do you, what have you thought of the team this year? I mean, there's been some people, Wenger in, Wenger out. You know, people have sort of had their doubts about the Keep team. Keep him in. Keep him in. Keep him you, in. You've been happy without him playing this season? Yeah, of course I am. You've always got to be happy. Be optimistic. At the end of the day, if you give up at the first hurdle, you're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> you sound like you should be part of the psychology team in the club. Listen, Wenger, if you want me to come in and have a chat with the lads before the matches, I'll come for free. All you've got to do is make sure my friends get their season tickets for free. Gemma and Dan, this is Dan. <laughs> Right, I will come in, I will get them all motivated, ready for the match every day. Now just introduce your, your squad to us, introduce this your squad. This is my squad, um, I brought them out with me today, this is P. Hi, oh, this is not awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, Daniel, I've known him for years since we were kids, at first he thought I was American but then it all came to light that I actually was actually English. This is my husband I Sam. I don't know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> this is my husband. Don't blame you, mate, at the moment. I don't know who she is. This is my right honourable best friend Gemma. This is Amy, who is related to Daniel. And this is Emma. We only met today, but we're going to be uh, good friends forever now, I think. Kelvin from the Black Scarf Movement, chilling on the boat. You're looking very cool with your beer in your hand, everything's good. Oh, it's great. You can't believe it's eight o'clock in the morning. It's amazing. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Uh, this, is, this is great, this is a uh, very nice cruising down the river, sun shining. What more do we want? Apart sun, from three points. Sun shining, greatest city in the world. Got to see the Arsenal get three points. Hopefully ever going to get a couple and the years will be down to sixth. <laughs> now, last time I was speaking to you was uh, the Black Scarf uh, movement uh, march that you did, very successful at the time. Any, any developments from there? Uh, heard anything from the club regarding uh, the points you were trying to put across on the day? Absolutely, yeah. We've had a um, couple of meetings with the club since the day, and um, they finally realised that uh, we're not about Arsene Wenger, which is a message we've we put across all the way along, but people still don't believe us. Uh, we had a lovely long chat with them about this uh, young guns enclosure that they're um, looking to do, and we think it's, it's an excellent move. 12 to 16 year olds all together, you know, 10 pound a ticket, local, local school lads, uh, it's, it's great. It's a step in the right direction, absolutely. And yeah. they, they intro, the, uh, uh, you know, that's been in the papers today, though, they've been talking about that. So that's a, one of the things that's been as a direct result as uh, consulting with you guys. Yeah, us, us along with some other supporters groups, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's been one of our things that we've, we've campaigned about for the last four years, is, is looking to the future of the club, because, you know, Arsenal's got one of the average age of their supporters is the oldest in the country, you know, and you've got to look for the future, and the future is the kids, and I want, I mean, my kids are, you know, too old to, to do the young guns enclosure, but, you know, plenty of my mates want the same thing, they want to go to a family enclosure, to the schoolboy enclosure as it used to be and in the old days and we moved that to the North Bank and the clock in. It was like serving an apprenticeship with the Arsenal, you know, and, and the club have finally, it looks like they've finally, you know, seen seen the area of their ways in the past about chasing the dollar and everything and uh, they've got to look for the future and the future is the young fans and you've got to make it affordable for them. So, you know, 
tops for them for doing so. Tops for them for doing so. So you think there's some changes, there's some positive things starting to happen as a result of uh, what you guys and others have been campaigning for? Absolutely. They, they have to, because to ignore it, um, the club will, will, will fall away. You know, as far as I'm concerned, and, and everyone that I talk to is, is about is the club is about the fans. Um, it ain't about... It ain't about the team so much, it ain't about the bricks and mortar or where we play. The heart and soul of any football club is its fans, and you only have to look at AFC Wimbledon. And if you don't treat your fans right, then, all right, they'll always be Arsenal fans, but they may not pay their dollar to come through the door. Um, and you want to make sure that the club carries on in the way that it has been. And, you know, recognising the fact that they've got to change their ways on, on affordable tickets, and make it attractive for, for youngsters to actually go in the ground rather than watch it on the telly. This is a very much a step in the right direction. They've got to be applauded for it. And um, any other sort of things you'd like to see the club come forward with? Uh, well, we'd certainly like to see the, the makeup of the board change. Uh, you know, in, in, in Europe, uh, the board tends to be made up of uh, ex-players or or they'll have a supporters representative or something there. Someone who actually has a feeling for the club. The people that we've got on there at the moment, they've done a great job in the past, but you know, it's, it's time for them to move on and, and hand it over to, uh, hand the baton over to younger people who, um, and people who've actually got a passion for the club. You know, it's all very well going out and, and getting like the, the top guy from Nike or Coca-Cola and Pepsi to look after your bits and pieces. But if they don't have the art and soul in the club in mind, things are likely to go wrong. So with our fan base that we've got, there's expertise out there that the club need to plug into. You know, So hopefully they'll listen to some of the things we've got to say, some of the concerns that we've got, and uh, you know, they're, they're hopefully they'll tap into it. Because at the end of the day, you know, we are the club. And on the pitch, what would you like to see next season because all right we're really all excited today we're, we're going but we are only challenging to get into the top four what we got to do next season to challenge to win a trophy well consistency will be a good thing um, I believe we as we've said for, for several seasons we're a couple of players away from being a, a challenging side you know um, our defense in recent games has, has done really well but Steve Bold has got to be able to be given control of our defence in the same way that Dornell did when he was under Terry Neal. The winning starts at the back. You know, if you don't concede a goal, you've got a very good chance of winning the game. The zonal marking and all that sort of stuff. Now, nah, forget it, mate. It don't work. I couldn't hear nothing you said there because it going crazy, yeah? But <laughs> no, I've got the gist of it. Better defence, and I agree with you. We definitely need a better defence. Um, Listen, it's, it's always great talking to you. You've always got some great opinions. And I'm glad that some of the stuff that you're really pushing through with the Black Scarf movement is really starting to get heard because it's really important. Cheers, Robbie. Up the Arsenal. Always. It's there. On my arms for the rest of my life. It's in me heart. Shit, Robbie. Give us the song. Shit, Robbie. Shit, Robbie. Give us the song. Shit, Robbie. Give us the song. It's Robbie. We're the best. Robbie. We're the best. Robbie.